everybody, welcome back. So I'm Miss Audrey and I'm at our downtown branch of the Fairfield County District Library. I'm in downtown Lancaster and I've got good news and bad news. The good news is, is that we are once again open for service. Yay! So feel free to come on down and visit us and do some browsing through our collections. The sad news is that we are not doing in-person programming for the rest of 2020. Boo! However, we are doing online programming instead, and today we are going to be doing sneaky art. Yay! We're going to be doing an art-themed program about once a month, and this is our first one. It's based off of this book, Sneaky Art, Crafty Surprises to Hide in Plain Sight by Mark um, Jocelyn. And if I have mispronounced your name, Ms. Jocelyn, I, I humbly apologize. So, um, sneaky art. What is sneaky art? The point of sneaky art is to surprise people. Um, hopefully make them laugh and smile. Uh, we've all been stuck inside for so long. This seems to be maybe a way to shake things up just a little bit. Just a couple reminders though. The point of this is to have fun and to make people smile, like I said. So just remember that not everybody has the same sense of humor that you do, and that if it's not funny for everyone, then it's not funny at all. So treat others how you'd like to be treated. Also, permanently vandalizing anything is not okay. So make sure that anything that you put up, you can take back down without hurting anything and um, make sure that you're not making a mess for other people to clean up. Most of what we're making today is paper-based, so leaving it outside where it'll get all soggy and gross is probably not the best idea. We might wanna keep these activities inside. So one last reminder, it's best if you scope out your location ahead of time so that you can plot out your sneaky surprises as effectively as possible. So our first our first activity today, our first craft, is called Fractured Faces. And the idea here is that you take a newspaper, or not a newspaper, I beg your pardon, a magazine. You find a magazine, you find people's faces in the magazine, and you cut out eyes, noses, mouths, etc. And you make mismatched Faces. Now the book recommends that you glue those face facial features onto a post-it note and then stick the post-it note up onto things and that's really good advice because it's very easy to peel post-it notes off of things. As you can see here they made a pretty cool doctored up um, traffic meter, parking meter. There we go, it's pretty silly looking. I decided to make my own though a little bit differently. So for my first example, I used double-sided tape that I know peels really easily off of plastic because again, you wanna be able to undo everything. Um, and I decided that Aslan needed a new look. There, so that's a silly face for Aslan the lion. And for my second example, I remembered how much my older brother used to eat all of my favorite snacks before I had a chance to get to them. And I thought that a polite reminder to share might be kind of funny. So I made this. I think it would make him laugh. But remember, not everyone has the same sense of humor. Uh, this would appeal to my brother, but it wouldn't necessarily appeal to everybody. So that is our first activity, fractured faces, and you can have fun with those. The next art project that I thought would be a good one to share from this book is called Lucky Penny. And it's based off of that rhyme, see a penny, pick it up for the rest of the day, you'll have good luck. And looking into this, little rhyme, I learned that in fact only pennies that are found heads up are considered lucky. So for extra luck when you're taping your penny down, make sure you do it with the head facing up. Um, so 
The idea behind this is that you're leaving lucky pennies for people as a cute little happy little pick-me-up to brighten people's day. So the first example that I made here, I just used cardstock and construction paper, really any kind of sturdy paper will do. I had some scrapbooking scissors that I used to make the big circle and I just used regular scissors to make the sort of word bubble. And that colorful thing in the middle is a cupcake wrapper. So really you can use whatever you have on hand. This other one that I made is made completely out of construction paper. So you can, again, you can use whatever you like. You can use stencils for your lettering. You can use newspaper or magazine letters for your lettering. You could not write anything at all and just put a penny on something colorful and leave it for people to find. There's no right or wrong way to leave somebody a lucky penny. And the third and final art project that I have today, the book calls them taglines. And the idea for this is that you decorate little gift tags, like what you put on presents for birthdays or Christmases, with cheerful little uplifting sort of um, messages. And then you leave them to people to, to again, brighten up their day, make them smile. Someone has a big game coming up or a big test or they're nervous or sad about something, maybe you can brighten up their day. The ones that are here are far, far smaller than the ones that I made. I didn't have any actual gift tags, so I had to make my own. Um, so again, just sturdy construction paper is fine. This is the first one that I made. Like I said, it's much, much bigger than the one in the book. I used foam letters for the words and I used washi tape for the exclamation marks. I would recommend that you write your message or lay out your message first and then cut out the tag to make sure you have enough space. The other one I made, it's a bit smaller. It just looks like that. The tricky part about this one was actually cutting that to look like a piece of candy. That was harder than I thought it would be. It definitely took longer than I thought it would. So again, you can use whatever you'd like for lettering. If you've got stamps, stencils, foam letters, magazine letters, your own funky handwriting, whatever you like. We would love to see your completed projects. If you're watching this on Facebook, feel free to share in the comments below. If you're watching on YouTube, please feel Free to email them to us. The email is in the descriptor. Um, also, we would again love to see you guys in person, so feel free to stop by. But if you do come to visit the library, please remember to wear your mask. They're letting me not wear one right now because I'm filming this video, but otherwise everyone has to wear a mask. And please feel free to join us next week where we'll be talking about a cool STEM project that we're doing in collaboration with the Works Museum in Newark, Ohio, and we'll be taking a look at what that will entail. So please join us next Thursday, and in the meantime, have a great week. Bye!